Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our Winter Thoughts Part 10. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do think weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very, very exciting Patreon page, where today we're actually going to be releasing our sixth winter forecast. So if you want to check that out early, you can check it out by going to the description or the pinned comment down below to check out our Patreon page. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know which winter month this year, so December, January, February, or I guess March can be included as well, which one of those months do you think will feature our biggest snowstorm this year? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know where you think it's going to be, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and first things first, we're going to be taking a look at our CFS model. This model is probably the best climate model there is. A lot of people... I uh, think that it's terrible, but it is the best of the bunch as the European seasonal model is completely broken. So the CFS model has really been the go-to throughout this year. Uh, now what we're taking a look at here is actually its forecast for the month of November. And I just wanted to show this because it actually lines up pretty well with my November forecast. If you've checked that out, if you haven't seen it, it's on my channel. You can go find that. But Basically, for the Pacific Northwest and through the Rockies and the West Coast, we're dealing with some colder than normal temperatures. And then the eastern two-thirds of the country, basically warmth overall. Uh, there will be some colder periods, but overall, it appears this month will be quite warm compared to normal for the eastern United States. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at some teleconnections the rest of the month of November. Uh, we're going to start taking a look at December, January, and February. And then we're going to start getting into also precipitation. All right, now here we are taking a look at, first off, our Arctic Oscillation. This is crucial, and I actually had a patron message me. I replied to uh, him or her, but they were asking me, basically, is this warm pattern going to actually help us later down the road get colder temperatures during the winter? And the answer is probably yes, as we're dealing with this positive AO here. As you can see, it's, it's above that black line. That's meaning we're in a positive phase. And that means that the Arctic regions are actually colder than normal. They're building up more snow, more ice than normal. Uh, and that's going to help us later down the road get some colder air moved down if we see this AO go negative at any point. So that is a good sign. Uh, and that's why we're dealing with the warmer temperatures in November. Uh, and then the PNA. This is why the colder temperatures are set over the western United States. In a positive phase, we see colder than normal conditions over the eastern United States. And in a negative phase, we see colder than normal conditions in the western United States. As you can see, by the 5th, this will be fully negative, and it doesn't look to go positive anytime soon. That's a major factor into why the west will be cold, and the east will most likely be warm. Uh, as we take a look at the 3rd through the 13th of November, it becomes apparently uh, very true that this pattern will take place. As you can see, uh, for the west, colder than normal, and for the east, warmer than normal overall during that time period. Although, as we move towards the 14th through the 24th, it becomes a little bit more unclear what's going to be going on moving forward. Overall, mostly cold for the west and overall mostly warm for the east, but it's a lot less confident here, as you can see. And actually, as we take a look at the 8th of December through the 18th of December, this model has us moving into a colder phase for the central and eastern United States uh, with maybe some neutral temperatures over the west. It looks a little confused there. Uh, but I, there is some warmth showing up for the West. So I think this might be indicating we might see a positive PNA try to take place and those colder temperatures move into mostly the Eastern United States. That'd be very interesting to see that occur. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move on and take a look at the entire month of December, then the entire month of January and February. Then we're going to start getting into uh, precipitation. Now, on that last frame I just showed, that December 8th through 18th, I think it was, uh, you want to take that with a grain of salt. That is towards the end of the model run, so that confidence is a little lower, but I just found it interesting that it does have the cold eventually returning to the east for that middle portion of December. Uh, and the good news is, uh, for a lot of you that hated the way last winter played out, is this is pretty much the opposite of how last winter went. If you remember, last, last November was actually very frigid. Uh, but that was the end of the frigid temperatures. Basically, we had a cold November and then warm uh, for the rest of the winter. This year, we're having a warm November, uh, which might mean the opposite. If you think about it, we might start to see cold move in for December, January, February. Uh, and although I don't think that's exactly going to be the case, uh, it is kind of showing us that at least we know this winter isn't going to be the same as last winter. We want to be as far away from last winter as we could possibly be. Uh, so let's just go ahead and take a look at the December forecast. And as you can see, we have a bit of a southeast ridge there. 
uh, from Texas all the way up into the mid-Atlantic portions of the Ohio Valley as well. I mentioned this in my previous winter forecast, and I've been adamant that this is going to take place. The Southeast Ridge is going to be a dominant factor this winter, unfortunately for a lot of us snow lovers in the eastern United States. I live under the orange region there, so I am in this region, and I don't want to be in it, so I have no bias here, uh, but I am expecting to be in that Southeast Ridge this winter. Colder overall for the western half and also uh, the upper Midwest and New England states. That could mean promising things for New England as far as snowfall uh, in the month of December. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and take a look at just January and February here uh, and take a look at what those months are going to look like. And then we're going to take a look at the Dece December, January, and February put together uh, forecast for the temperatures according to this model. And then we're going to start taking a look at precipitation. All right, now here's January, and as you can see, uh, we see a bit of a winter thaw here. A lot of warmer temperatures move further north, uh, and overall it looks quite mild. There are some colder areas like the Pacific Northwest, maybe the Rockies, portions of the Plains, and even New England. The odd thing is, is New England looks to be cold, according to this model, January, let's see, December, January, uh, and what we're about to see in a minute is that it's still going to be cold in February. I'll show you guys that in a minute. The Southeast Ridge, though, guys, I'm telling you, it looks to be a dominant factor this winter. And again, I don't like it. I am I have no bias here. I do not want a Southeast Ridge to happen, but I am anticipating that there will be a strong Southeast Ridge. So I am being perfectly honest with you guys. Here's what February looks like. And this looks to be potentially the coldest month of the winter if it was to look like this. As you can see, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, the Upper Midwest, the Northeast, New England, all of these regions are colder than normal. Uh, even the Pacific Northwest as well, which looks to be probably one of the coldest regions this winter. That's what I've been forecasting pretty much through my entirety of my winter forecast series since I've been starting them in like August. Uh, I've been constantly calling for the uh, Pacific Northwest, the Rockies, the upper Midwest to be below normal temperatures. And I still feel that same way months and months later. So that's been one of the most consistent calls that we've had. Uh, but I want to say one thing. If this was to occur, I know a lot of you are probably upset that January and, and December don't look the best. If we were to see a, a February like this, even one month being colder and snowier than normal would be leagues ahead of last winter because we had zero months that were colder or snowier last winter. It was warm and snowless in December, January, and February, and even March. So it was basically the least snowy and cold winter you could imagine. So even in a worst case scenario, you can expect that we will at least have some periods of cold, some periods of snow this winter uh, that will put us well ahead of what last winter was like. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're actually going to take a look at that December, January, and February forecast according to this model put together. Then we're going to remind you guys what our temperature forecast was most previously, and then we're going to get right into the precipitation outlook from this model. Then we're going to close out the video. All right, now here's the what we would call the seasonal forecast or December, January, and February. All of those months put together is our meteorological winter. Meteorological winter starts on December 1st and it ends on the very last day of February. Um, and as you can see, overall for the northern United States, colder than normal. That's a lot of people are like, duh, it's colder in the north, but it's colder than what is even normal for those regions. And it's warmer than what is even normal for the southeast and portions of the southwest as well. Now, let's just remind you guys what our winter forecast looked like. And I actually think I see a lot of similarities here. I think they are actually pretty much on the same page as I am, the, the CFS model. Whatever that model is seeing is pretty much what I'm seeing. Uh, colder in the north, especially the northwest and the north central. Uh, and then warmer overall for the southern and eastern United States. The models have been trending at New England, maybe being a bit colder than what I was anticipating. So once we update that winter forecast later today, you might see some differences for New England. We'll have to wait and see. Again, if you want early access to that, you can check it out on our Patreon page. Uh, let's just break down the, the precipitation forecast. Here's November. Overall, it's going to be dry in the eastern United States, potentially wetter than normal out there in the west and central United States. December, though, the southeast and the south central United States, as well as the northeast, look to potentially have more precipitation than what is normal, which is pretty much the opposite of what the entire winter is looking like. But this model is picking up on the potential nor'easter storm track for the month of December uh, with the La Nina. This is kind of giving me some uh, December of 2010 uh, vibes, but we will have to see what happens. This is kind of looking like that, honestly. 
Uh, here's January, a little more dry, but still near normal precipitation for the eastern United States with very stormy for the northwest uh, and through the plains and the Great Lakes. That's exactly what I'm calling for in my forecast. Uh, and pretty much the same story for February, except we see the Pacific Northwest get a little more dry. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, uh, but still wet for the plains and up through the Great Lakes as well. Interesting, interesting stuff. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we will see any major snowstorms through the, throughout the month of November? And Zeta Derv said, I think there will be at least a couple of major snowstorms to finish the year. Uh, and I think that'll probably be the case as it almost always is. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Michael Cotalesa, Madbirds, Rosemary Haynes, Alicia Davis, Catbite, Terry Curtis, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Felix Wheatfield, Michael Buell, Mariah Vieira, Kellen Manhart, Noah Harley, and Mark J. Alongside our platinum patrons, Adam S., Justin Quantrell, Donna Carnes, Alan Belemo, Larry LaPan, Dovi Nagel, James Wade, and Cameron Marshall. Anyway, that is becoming a major mouthful as I just, it's, <laughs> it's taking like a whole minute to say all the patrons, which isn't a problem. I mean, it's a really good problem to have, and I appreciate all of you so much for joining the patron. I hope you guys are loving the content that I bring you guys there and the interaction that you can be a part of with me and just talk about the weather. Uh, if you would like to be on this patron end screen or join our Patreon for those awesome features, you can do so by checking it out in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.